you guys find this? So I'm the director and I want to know so I don't waste my time on non-good advertising. So was it email, Facebook flyers? Email. Email? Anyone not email? We got it through like, I guess one of our roommates yeah. Yeah, got the notification message in it to us. Okay, so like through Facebook? Yeah, yeah it looked like it might have been from a Facebook page. Okay, so you have a Facebook event too. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Just good to know. Facebook is working. <laughs> um, Alright, so some words before they begin. So hi, I'm also on the director of Common Sense. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, if you have any questions afterward, just email GUCS, Georgetown University Common Sense, at georgetown.edu. We have all of our older, uh, almost all the ones we get done, older workshops on our YouTube channel. Um, you can go to that really easily by going to our website, which is on uh, the documents up there. Um, next week, or er, April 6th from 5 to 6 p.m. in Rice 112, we have Off Campus Housing 101 uh, with the Austin Neighborhood Life Camp um, Office. So if you would like to learn more about that, do that on our Facebook, and also we're pretty active on Twitter. Um, anything else to mention? No, so yeah, follow us on social media to get other updates on our events. Um, the papers are up there. Uh, keep getting more pizza, we probably have plenty left. And I think that's all, if you guys sure. want to start. Um, well, to start, like, we like, apologize in advance and thank you for your patience with the projectors kind of coming in and out. Um, we can move as slow and fast as you guys want, and we can always just wait for the text to appear if you're not quite listening to us or we're moving too fast. We just want to make this as interactive as possible and as helpful for you guys as possible, so stop us whenever you need like, us to go back into detail about something. Afterward, we're going to do Q&A, and then I'm also going to leave um, my email and a couple other emails through Wofsku that you can reach out to us through um, for the questions because we really just want to help students on campus learn more about these issues and hopefully help them with our products as well. Um, so I guess we move to introductions. Yeah, so um, my name is Shannon. I'm a junior in the School of Foreign Service mm -hmm. from Boston, Massachusetts and currently I am the Chief Development Officer at Wofsku. Uh, meaning that I do a lot of work in strategy and development, but also community relations and uh, getting to know the students. And I'm Ben. Um, I'm currently the treasurer at Guasu, but I used to be the co-chair of credit, and that's why I'm uh, semi-qualified to give this presentation, um, and will hopefully be helpful to you guys. And we'll get right underway. Um, so <laughs> the first thing we want to talk about is sort of like, what is the credit score? And so the easy, way, uh, the easy way to think about this is that a credit score is a measure of your history of making payments on loans, on credit cards, etc., and seeing how good you are at paying off all these debts. Um, a credit score is a number um, that basically shows all of your history in loans and lending on um, one sheet or one, one number. Um, so why does it matter? Um, a good credit score is important because it's a measure of your trustworthiness of making payments on time. Um, and so when you have that right now, in the future, what it can help you with is getting lower rates on loans. It can help you get loans if you weren't able to get them before. It can help you get a credit card or a house or a mortgage. So essentially, your credit score is a really important way for your future self to be able to save money on loans or obtain loans. Um, and so how do you find out what your credit score is? Um, I'm sure you guys have all seen like free credit score report.com commercials and credit karma commercials. So you can definitely find your credit score from there. Um, and you can also find them from a various, uh, various other financial websites. Um, Capital One does have a credit wise um, program that's a really great way to look at your credit score. Um, another way, or Ben will talk about this more, but the main way you find out what your credit score is is doing a hard pull of your credit report. So every person has a credit report that talks about their credit score, the different loans they've taken out, um, the loans they've paid off, etc. And every time you pull that score, um, it affects your score because it shows how much you need to see it. So we don't really suggest pulling your credit score or having someone pull it unless you are going through a loan process. So I would recommend looking at all these other ways to see how you can look at your credit score. 
Um, and so how is my credit score calculated? Um, as I mentioned before, there's a bunch of different ways to look at it. A uh, part of it's payment history, a other part is amount owed, um, length of credit history, types of credit, and new credit um, that you're trying to obtain. Uh, just to put it, sort of, to explain this graph a little more, um, there's the credit score, which is really, you know, the number that we've been talking about that shows sort of your tr trustworthiness in loans. Um, and credit itself is sort of the capital you're obtaining, um, the money you want to borrow. Um, so how do I build my credit score? Um, Ben will talk about this a little more, um, but to start, everybody starts with no credit. Um, and so the way you can build this is through paying back a loan or um, maybe being on a parent's credit card if they are paying off your loan and your name is under it. Uh, it can help boost your score a little bit. Um, another program that we do do at Guafsku is the Guafsku Credit Builder Program, um, which helps people who don't have any credit um, build their credit and be able to get a credit card or loan in the future. Okay, so now I'm going to dive in and take over and just kind of jump through a few of the things that will affect your credit score. Um, so going back to that graph, we saw two slides prior. Um, your credit history is important basically on uh, what types of credit you've taken out, how consistently you've paid them, whether you've had delinquencies, whether you've had uh, charge-offs, um, and also something that a lot of people don't know is uh, really the, the, la the second to last item there is your percentage of debt balance to your credit limits. So if you have a credit card with say a $10,000 limit, that doesn't mean that you should be charging that credit card up to 10000 If the proportion of your balance to the limit is high, that adversely affects your credit score. So you want to keep um, any revolving lines of credit in the 20 to 30% range of the credit limit. Ideally, you want to keep everything at zero and owe as little money as possible, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, the, that percentage is important. So you never want to rack up too much credit card debt. The number of times your credit score is pulled, uh, Shannon referenced that earlier, and that is important. Um, one thing you can do is if you know your credit score is going to be hard pulled by an institution, instead of trying to double pull it yourself, go ahead and ask that institution, hey, can you send me a copy of my credit score? And they should be happy to help you out. Um, I will talk more about asking. I think you know it never hurts to ask whether you're applying for credit, ask for a lower interest rate, ask for better terms. If you're applying for a credit card, ask for them to waive an annual fee. It never hurts to ask. Um, there's a lot of competition between banks, credit unions. Everybody wants your money. Um, and so definitely pit them against each other and try to get yourself the best deal possible. Uh, managing credit cards. So in bold, fiscal responsibility. Do not live beyond your means. I have seen so many people evaluating credit who just have irresponsible spending habits and they have amazing jobs out of Georgetown making six figures and their credit card debt is spiraled out of control and their credit is deteriorated to a degree where they really can't manage their life. So set a budget, whatever your job is, be conservative, you want to put money away for your retirement, you want to be able to pay off all your credit needs, um, the shiny car isn't what you need, um, definitely set a strict budget, stick to it, be strong, you will be so happy you did in the future. Um, so really, do not live beyond your means, put as little as you can on the credit cards. Uh, the best case scenario is that you pay off your balance every month. That means you're not carrying a balance that's going to be revolving and getting charged interest. Because um, again, paying for something for free without credit is the cheapest by far than paying for something and having to pay interest on that. So the less interest you pay, the better your financial situation is going to be. Uh, the next point, pay more than the minimum scheduled payment. So credit card companies kind of try to trick you and they say the minimum payment per month is $25 or $50, and they want you to make that minimum payment because that way you're not really eating into the balance that you have, and so that balance can keep growing and growing and growing and charging up interest, and it's going to just take you longer to pay off that debt, and you're going to pay a higher proportion of interest to the principal you had than if you were paying more than, more than the minimum payment. So definitely don't plan on just paying the minimum payment on your credit card. So try to pay at least double the limit. Um, and that will help you pay less interest and just shed debt. 
Um, next point, credit card consolidation. So this is kind of more for a situation where your credit card debt might be getting out of hand um, and you can't fully control it. And so what credit card consolidation can do for you is you take out a loan with a bank or a credit union for the total amount of credit card debt you have and you pay off the credit card debt with that loan and that way you only have one small fixed payment paying off the entire balance instead of a higher interest rate that's going to be associated with a credit card continually revolving um, on your balance. So consider credit card consolidation if you feel like your credit card bill is getting out of hand um, and you feel like you're paying a really high interest rate and you just want to get rid of it. Um, next, avoid closing cards. So one thing that people might not know is that closing credit cards can hurt your credit score. Um, the reason for that is that credit cards are associated with credit limits. And so like I mentioned earlier, where the proportion of your balance to your credit limit affects your credit score by diminishing the amount of credit you have available, you are making yourself riskier. So it doesn't hurt to keep a, a car with no balance, and that also just shows good payment history. Um, so definitely be wise when considering closing cards. Um, as you move later into your life and you have a mortgage and a car, um, you can start closing things because you have a longer body of history, but you definitely don't want to rush to close cards, especially your first card because that's going to be probably the start of your credit history, which goes into uh, calculating your flight code. Um, I felt like that was kind of a technical slide, so I can take questions now before I move on. Um, so, it's a scenario I've run into before where how long does it take for the uh, ding to your credit for credit card issues? Like, for example, one time my auto pay did, just didn't work, so I didn't realize that for a month or two, and I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, I didn't pay. Well, oh, as far as missing a payment? Yeah. How long it takes to ding you? Yeah. Um, so, it would be, it's like you take a minor hit. Um, generally, um, Equifax categorizes delinquencies in a couple different buckets. There's 30-day delinquency, 60-day delinquency, and 90-day delinquency. So that's missing a payment. So if you forgot about it for a month, mm -hmm. you'd be that'd be one 30-day delinquency, which is a small hit to your credit score. One thing you can do, like I said, always be pushing and be your best advocate. So if you feel like there was a mistake, you can call the card issuer um, and say, "Hey, like I didn't know I had this payment. I'm going to make it now. Can you reverse delinquency?" Um, I see a lot of people have like corporate cards with like Macy's or like Lens Crafters or random, random uh, charge cards that are company specific and they literally forget that they had that card and say there was like a $6 balance and so for three years it's like racking up charges and it's delinquent and can really damage your score. Um, so you definitely want to A, be aware of all the things that you owe and stay on top of that so you aren't missing that. And if you do, fight for yourself, be your best advocate, and try your best to reverse it. Um, another thing, before I get to you, OD, um, another thing is when people are evaluating your credit, um, if you know you have an issue like that, there will be space in all applications to kind of give your added notes and tell your side of the story. Um, not all banks will give you a phone interview when you're applying for credit. Uh, we do. But if they don't give you a phone interview, you want to say in the notes, hey, there was a situation, I didn't know I had this, this uh, balance, and it looks like there's three delinquencies, but I paid, the, I, you know, I paid it on time, my credit is good, X, Y, Z, and that's something that's going to help you in consideration. So always fight for yourself um, whenever you can. Really quick. Um, one thing I do want to add to this slide is like credit cards, essentially, there's sort of like two components to it. Um, the first is that people often think of credit cards as like free money, right? But we all know that there's no such thing as a free lunch. And because of that, you have to pay interest on a credit card. So the reason why you have to pay interest is because it's so easy to access this money. And the reason why interest payments get so high is because it's so easy to access this money. Um, the second part is like we all know that with a loan, right, you have to pay interest because you're borrowing someone's money and the interest is sort of your payment on the time that you take to borrow that money and pay it back. A credit card is also a loan, a type of loan, that's just a lot more short term. And so when you think about credit card debt and credit card interest, 
A lot of times, like interest payments rack up because you aren't paying back the short-term loan. And so thinking about credit cards, I think it's easiest to think about it in like a loan setting. Like every time you don't pay back your credit card in full, you are creating more and more payments that you have to make on that free money you got first. Um, yeah. yeah, but you want to carry as little interest as possible. So exactly. by paying your balance, your entire balance every month, you're saving yourself a ton of money. Um, another thing that might be helpful for you guys that we didn't discuss is just kind of the basics of credit card APRs. Um, so generally those are like anywhere in the 10 to 30 percent range. What is the, APR? Mm -hmm. the annual percentage rate. So that's the interest rate you're paying on the credit card debt. Um, as a first time credit card holder, you're probably going to take something in the 16 to 20 percent range. But again, as I said, you always want to be your best advocate. And so if you are approved for a credit card with, say, Chase, and they say your starting rate is 20%, say, can you give me 12? Can you give me 14? Can you give me 16? And just fight them over every percent because that's going to help you in the long run and it's worth doing. Nobody really does that. People just say, oh, I got approved. Let's go. It's monopoly money and it's 18%. But you want to be your best advocate and ask for a better rate wherever you can, better terms wherever you can, uh, better rewards, waive annual fees, and they might not give it to you, but it's worth the 10 minutes it takes to try. Yeah. So we can just go in a line here. Matt, and then we can go, yeah, move forward on the questions. Go ahead. Does a potential employer have access to your credit score? Uh, so a lot of employers do check your credit just as a means of seeing how trustworthy you are. Um, nobody wants to hire someone that's delinquent on their credit because they're not really up to their word when they're signing financial obligations. How can you rely on them to work responsibly for you? So employers do have access to your credit if they can. Go ahead. Um, I have two questions. The first being uh, about what you just said about um, calling to see if you can lower your APR. Does that matter if you're not planning to carry a balance on your credit card, if you're planning to pay it fully? Yeah, so if you're not going to carry a balance, the APR doesn't really matter because you're not getting the interest charges. But very few people can carry absolutely no balance. So it's still worth it to fight for the lowest APR you can get. Okay, and the other thing is, um, is a FICO score the same as, when you're talking about FICO score, is it the same as like the credit scores that like, Whatever the Credit Bureau Equifax. Like, yeah, it's the same. Okay. It's the same. Yeah. You had a question. And you had a question. Oh, like when you're like trying to get a lower APR, how do you like plead your case for like why you deserve a lower <laughs> score? Like, what do you say? Yeah. So talk about you know, be be a spin doctor. So talk about whatever you have going for you. Whether you have a great job that has upside, whether you have good income, whether you've never had bad credit in the past. Most young people have low credit scores just because they don't have enough credit history. So it might be that you've only had one or two loans out, but you can say, I have no bad credit history, I just don't have enough. I've made all these payments on these two things. Please give, can you give me the best percentage I can get? Um, another thing that I will touch on later is you should definitely, definitely, definitely do your homework before you apply for credit. So every time you send in a credit application, they're going to hard pull your credit score, which hurts it a little bit. So you want to research um, and compare banks and see who has the lowest starting rates, who doesn't have annual fees, who compare, I'm sure there's, there's tons of sites out there where you can compare credit cards, see which one makes the most sense for you, call sales reps before you apply to get your questions answered so that you can limit yourself to one application. And also while you're going through that process, you can say, do I have to take the rates you offer? Can we negotiate? These are all things uh, you can try to do on your own ahead of time. Ben touched upon this. There's a lot of perks to a credit card besides just the rate that you can negotiate and think about. Um, yeah. Like, for example, the amount of time they give you to pay off your balance, right? The shorter it is, the more likely you're going to miss it or just forget, and that's going to hurt you and give them a higher interest rate. So make sure you're looking, you're looking at, like, um, rewards, you're looking at points, you're looking at amount of time you have to pay off and all those different things to holistically um, evaluate a credit card program. And, and if you are going to be in this best case scenario and be a credit MVP and pay off 
your entire balance every month and not carry a balance, then what's going to make the difference for you is which card has the best rewards. Because it, the rewards are just going to be a percentage of every dollar you spend. So if you are good at budgeting and you know that you're not going to put up too much credit card debt to pay each month, then the rewards is going to be the difference maker for you. So, sorry. Sorry. Add, you adding to like arguing your case, this also happens with like administrative errors. Because I did one of my credit cards, they said, "Oh, your lease was not sufficient to prove where you live," and I'm like, "That's weird." So I called. They're like, "Huh? That was on us. We're sorry. You're approved." I'm like. There you go. So don't always just accept what happens. It's free to call and just ask what's going on. And honestly, like a big bank, like they want to just, like they don't, if, if one person is saying, can I get two percentage points off, they're probably going to, I think they'll probably give it to you. It's worth asking for at a minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, your question in the back. Yeah. I don't know if you already covered this because I came a little late, yeah. but um, you said that some people, most people carry a balance on their credit card. How do you know what's an okay balance, and like, how do you know when your balance you're, is excessive? Yeah. Yeah. So I said earlier in the presentation that ideally a good benchmark is to keep your balance under thirty percent of the credit limit you're approved for. So say you had a car with a credit limit of ten thousand, you don't want to go above three thousand. Um, other metrics people use is comparing their unsecured debt to their annual income. And so you don't want that to really rise above 10%. So if you're making, say, $60,000 a year after taxes, you don't want to have carry more than $6,000 of unsecured debt. And unsecured debt is just debt where they can't, I guess, like, take something. Yeah, so personal them. loans and credit cards. Um, I mean. But like an auto loan or mortgage would be secured, right? Because they can come and take your car. And student loans are secured debt also. That's probably good for everyone to know. Um, any other questions or should I move on? Okay, and I can always take more questions after the presentation. Um, how am I evaluated for loans? Um, I can't speak exactly to all credit evaluators, but I can tell you what we do at the credit union, which is, I believe, industry standard. Um, so when people are evaluating you for a loan, they're going to kind of combine a lot of different factors. Again, credit score is going to be a big thing. And that encompasses your current debt situation. Um, so that's going to be a part of the scale. And your credit score is going to be a lot of times what determines your rate um, and your eligibility. So that's really important. Other factors that can help you, your income, if you're making strong income and living within your means, that can be something that you use to push for a better rate. Um, what the loan is for. So if you're applying for, say, credit card, you need that for your daily expenses, versus applying for a personal loan to go on some vacation, you might be less likely to get that. Um, in terms of the loan, these are things you should read closely. And if you don't understand them, Google them, because I think financial literacy is big on the internet. Um, so how, you know, how long is the loan going to be? Is there um, a penalty for early payment of the loan? How, how often do you have to pay? Is the rate fixed? Is the rate floating? These are all things that you should know in advance. Um, and then lastly, the debt to income and unsecured debt ratios. Um, so debt to income is going to be the total debt you have divided by your annual income. And then the unsecured debt ratio is what I mentioned earlier, which is the amount of unsecured debt you have over your annual income. Um, this ratio is obviously going to be higher because it also factors in secured debt. But um, both of these are things that lenders take into account when they're deciding whether or not to approve you. Um, questions on this slide? Yeah, go ahead. Does it hurt you to not have any debt? Like, if you don't have loans or like you only have a part-time job, like, would you be able to get approved that way? So it depends. It's hard. If you don't have any credit history whatsoever, it's very difficult to get approved for a credit card without a co-signer. Um, that's why things like our Credit Builder product are a really great idea for young people. Um, so it, it depends. Generally, the lack of credit score, it, it hurts you a little bit in that you're, not gonna, you're gonna be sorted generally in the, as a mid-tier applicant at best. What we do at the credit union is if you have no credit score whatsoever, you are in our C bucket from A to E, and so you're going to get 
not the best rate, where you might actually deserve a better rate. Um, that's why it's important that you get a credit history, whether it's through our credit builder product, whether it's through getting a credit card with your parents, whether it's through buying your first car, whatever it is, establishing that credit history. Um, and then if you've paid off, you know, if, you, if you have a credit card where you have a small bill that you're paying every month and you have no debt, at least you have a credit history to help you out. Um, anybody else? Yeah. How do you check your credit score? Your credit score? You can go on like Credit Karma or one of those free sites. And also if you're applying for a loan, um, you can ask the lender for a copy of your credit score if they hard pulled you. Does it hurt your credit score to check it? Every time your credit score is hard pulled, it hurts your credit score. And is it hard pulled when you go on like credit cards? I don't believe so. Um, okay, we'll move on. Oh, actually, so sometimes I hear a lot, like I tell people, oh, I have student loan debt, does that hurt me? They're like, oh, it's, it's good debt, though. Which feels kind of weird to me. Can you explain why people would say that, or are they just wrong? Like good debt versus bad debt, or specifically student loans? Student loans, yeah. Um, well, so student loans, it depends whether you're on income-based repayment or not, and what your monthly payment is going to be. Um, so if you're... If your student loan monthly payment is exorbitant and it seems like you can barely service that with your normal job, then adding additional credit to that is going to be tough. But if you have income-based repayment or a reasonable monthly payment that kind of fits into your budget, then it shouldn't hurt you. Okay. And just add into that. So I work in the FinAid office. If you have any questions about income-based repayment, talk to your FinAid counselor. If you want to know specifically how to apply for that and everything, unless you want to speak about that, it's not part related. But I, yeah, really I think you might that. actually be better equipped to speak about than, that than I am. I don't know how to go about getting income based repayment. Mm -hmm. I just know that it's really, really helpful for a lot of people that have a lot of student, student debt because your payments are going to be tied to whatever you're making in your job. And so it's within a reasonable range where you should be able to service that student loan debt with the rest of your life and still get by. Right. Um, so, for example, for mine, I cut it down from 500 a month to 100 a month, just because I said this is what I can pay, and they looked at my W-2s from the last year and were like, it seems reasonable. It wasn't too hard to pay. Yeah. So I really recommend talking to your financial counselor or just looking it up online and seeing how you can do that with, once you graduate. Sure. Um, so I was reading about student loan repayment, and given that you have federal, I guess, like a, the one of the loans that gives you a six month grace period. Um, I was wondering if you pay it off, like, I was reading that if you pay it off, your credit score can go down a little bit because of the, the like, your average length of whatever account gets lower. And I was wondering if, if there's any reason to, like, extend paying off your student loans just to build credit. Um, I'm not too sure exactly about, I don't know if that's true that paying off your student loan debt would hurt your credit score. That seems kind of counterintuitive to me. I would say, in general, paying off your student loan debt as fast as you can is good for your overall like credit and financial health because once you pay off your student loan debt, you can move into your first mortgage, you can move into a car, and those types of things would be more substantial payments that would help, that would help you. There's no reason to really carry a balance where you don't need to, unless the payment's ridiculously low. But like just out of because like in order to qualify for instance like for a poor mortgage or a car loan like a, like a with a I guess a good rate like is there any option would that be an option to like build credit to to, to keep your oh so yeah to report okay I see so your point is to make to have a higher frequency of payments yeah to show more credit worthiness um, it depends on the particular situation if you're like. In your 30s, it depends. So if you're 25 and you're like looking at paying off your student loan debt, you might not want to because you've only had three years of paying it. But if you're, you know, in your 30s and there's only a small portion of it left, it won't make as big of a difference. Um, one quick thing about paying off loans early is that a lot of financial institutions do charge you for that. I know it sounds ridiculous, right? Um, so be really careful when you are getting a loan to look at the terms really carefully. Um, 
we don't usually charge we, we don't, don't we charge don't. people to pay off early but a lot of the big banks will probably and the reason they do that is because there's foregone interest that they're losing out on by you paying early as for the grace period you mentioned, I would recommend not like slamming down all your money on a loan the second you step out of you know with your cap on and everything, because you want to use that time to build up money, and you'll have unexpected expenses that you didn't have in college, um, like you know applying for places, putting a security deposit. So I recommend using the grace period. Relocation just, costs. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. You need to have like um like I guess like a Green security board. fund before you should think about doing any of this, because the worst thing is to be totally out of cash and then have some sort of emergency um, that you can't afford. Or get like a great job in Seattle, and you're like, oh, I can't even move there right now. It's, yeah, we have a class called um, Finances After College. It's up on our YouTube channel, all about things like this. Perfect, uh, let's move on. Um, so general credit tips. Um, I think I might have said some of these already just in describing other things, but I thought it would be helpful to just have a set of just general good practices. So one, apply for credit intelligently, do your homework. So again, that's researching. If you want a credit card, compare credit cards. Call sales reps, see who has the best APR. See who has you know the lowest annual fees. See who has the best rewards. Compare everything so that you're making an intelligent decision with your as, as few applications as possible. Because if you just apply to 10 banks for a credit card, they're gonna hard pull your credit 10 times and hurt you 10 times. Whereas you should be able to do your homework and do one or two applications um, and get yourself ahead with the best deal anyways. Um, to create a monthly budget, um, when, you, when your credit spirals out of control is generally either something really bad happens in your life where you have a big unexpected expense you lose your job or you are an irresponsible spender and being an irresponsible spender is probably the most common and that's the easy, the only one you can control out of those three really um, so be responsible with your spending budget out every month with everything you know have a rainy day fund so that you don't need to go into credit markets to get debt for something that you didn't expect um, so really financial plan there are so many budgeting books, things online that can help you get you started, um, but it's really important to have a budget and stick to the budget. Uh, get a co-signer. Um, if your parents are in good credit health, having a co-signer generally will A, increase your chances of being approved for the credit you're applying for, and B, in some cases, get you a lower rate. Uh, for us, you do get a lower rate with a co-signer, so definitely, if you have you know, a parent or a relative or anyone that's willing to co-sign on your behalf, that will help your application, that will help your rate. Um, four, always ask for better terms. Um, I've said this a few times, well, I don't know if very many people like, advise this, but it really doesn't hurt for you to advocate for yourself and try to get better terms um, with whatever it might be, APR, annual fees, terms, whatever it might be, and the worst thing that can happen is you just hear no, and you move on with your life, but it's worth trying. Um, go ahead. Uh, I have a question about co-signers. Um, <coughs> is it recommended if you can't get a co-signer? I don't know, like, is it, is it, for example, like, if you're a co-signer, if you are late on whatever payments, does it affect your co-signer? It doesn't does affect, it affect your co-signer's credit, no. What would be, like, the only point for them to co-sign really is to help you. It's not going to help them. It's just going to be in the instance that you default on the loan or you can't pay the loan, then they're expected to step in. Okay, um, personal loan versus adding to credit card balance. So, um, again, Credit card balances carry the highest interest rates and in all the products we've talked about. And so sometimes you might want to consider taking out a personal loan instead of adding to your credit card balance. Um, the perks of a personal loan is that you're going to have uh, one fixed payment for a set, set period of time. Um, so if you have like a one-time expense, 
that you know um, that you know exactly what it's going to be. Say you graduated college and you need money to move into your new place, get yourself set up, buy a car, whatever it is. It might make sense to apply for a loan rather than putting it on your credit card debt. In general, you don't want to put anything on your credit card. I've seen people put like educational things on their credit card, like uh, like instead of getting a PSL, adding on to their credit card debt. Terrible idea. So Take like PSL? Private student loans. Private student loans. Okay. Yeah, uh, private student loans. Um, pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> What's that? Pumpkin spice latte. Okay, yeah, I'll try to cut down on the acronym button. Um, if it's if it's like a one-time thing, it makes sense to take out a personal loan than to add on to your credit card debt unless you're confident that it's an expense that's not too big and you can pay off on that credit card pretty fast. Um, last one, I don't know if you guys know what payday loans are, but stay away from them like the plague. They have ridiculous APRs that are like 300, 400 uh, percent. Avoid, avoid payday loans at all costs. Um, if you budget properly, you'll never be in a situation where you need to get a payday loan. But again, if you hear payday loan, just run away. Um, let's see. And then the last one, what happens to my credit if I default on a student loan? Um, so obviously any defaults are going to very adversely affect your credit score um, and stay for seven years after the default. So say you defaulted, you would have seven years of having a lot of difficulty getting access to any credit. And if you did, you would probably be paying very high rates based on the fact that your credit score is low. Um, I don't know if people have Perkins loans. Those are expiring in September of this year. But Perkins loans stay on your credit history until they're paid off in full. So being delinquent on a Perkins loan will hurt you until you have fully paid it off. So that one especially you want to stay on top of. Um, that's student loan default. We did mention income based repayment. So before you default, if your payments are exorbitant, apply for an income based repayment plan so that you can manage your student loans with the rest of your life. Your student loan payment shouldn't be the biggest burden in your life. It, it, it probably will be the biggest burden in your life, but it shouldn't be so overriding that you can't pay your other like, basic living expenses. And something else in the student loans is that I, I've heard people just like, oh, if I don't answer the phone when they call, it's all going to be okay. No, answer the phone calls, talk to them. They, they do want your money, but if you're not giving anything to them, they're willing to work for a little bit. So you can always haggle and negotiate down, like advocate for yourself. Yeah, and be upfront. It doesn't, any loan, it doesn't have to be a student loan. If you find yourself in a position where you can't pay, the, you, the best, you know, it's a terrible idea to just not answer calls and run and move into collections. Try to get yourself on a payment plan, see what you can do, but be upfront and work with your creditors to get the best solution for yourself. Um, now we have Q&A. Uh, hopefully that was helpful-ish. Um, really quickly before we go into Q&A, I just, I think like a lot of people sitting here are like, so what do I do now? Like this was a whole lot of information. Um, and what I would say is, Number one, figure out how to build your credit score, right? Whether that's through one of our programs, whether that's through um, a credit card with your parents, like the first thing you wanna do is take control of your credit score today so you don't have to worry about it tomorrow, right? The second is really try to budget and learn like fiscal responsibility. Um, know your options, right? Your credit card is not always going to be the best option. Sometimes maybe taking out a personal loan is better. Sometimes um, saving money for a rainy day is better than paying off your debt. So really do the math out and research to know that. And finally, Ben said this a lot and I really want to repeat it, like advocate for yourself. Um, a lot of financial institutions will want to listen, especially if you go to a smaller institution like a credit union, not just us, but all credit unions are nonprofit, and they are here to work with you and want to help you. So I would say like the number one or number top three things to think about leaving here is your credit score, um, knowing your options and sort of advocating yourself and finding the best resources. Yeah, yeah. and then Q&A now. 
Um, I had a quick question. I know some banks have like automatic payment plans. Is there a way you can set that up with your different credit cards, even if they're not from the institution that has your checking yeah, savings so accounts? Yeah, so a lot of banks set up like bill pay services for you. Um, so that would be something you get in touch with, like wherever you have your checking and savings account, calling them and saying, hey, I have these loan payments, can we do something where I just automate it out of my checking account? And they will generally, almost all of them have things where you can set up a plan to take care of that for you. Uh, so for the credit building loan thing that um, they have here, how quickly will that build your credit? And how much do you have to spend? Yeah, so <laughs> I've pitched this a lot. Um, our basic product is a thousand dollar loan. That's 18 months. And so the principal is $1,000. But what we do is you pay the interest for the entire loan up front, and then we freeze the loan for you. So all you have to do is apply and give us the $30 payment up front, and then you're done. And that's an 18 month loan. So it'll probably take a few months, at least 12 months, to like, for that to, if you have no credit history, for that to establish your credit history. And then from there, we've seen people go from nothing to up to 700, which is a really good score. Um, but every case is different. Yeah. And on that sort of how it works technically um, is that you're taking out a thousand dollar loan with Kowalski, um, and we are paying off the loan for you every month plus the interest on it. So like that makes your credit score obviously go yeah. up because you're paying a loan on time every so month. So you don't you don't have to make the payments. We right. automate all that for you. And that might sound a little weird. Like why would we do that? Because I know the first time I got to Georgetown and someone pitched that to me, I was like, that sounds illegal. Um, <laughs> it's not. It's very much legal. The reason why you don't hear about this more often is big banks like Bank of America or PNC or like Chase or wherever. They don't want to do this for you. They want you to have a bad credit score so that you have to pay more interest on their loans. Like, why we do this is because we're not here trying to make a profit off anyone. Like, most credit unions are the same way. Um, so, it's totally legal and, like, technically, it looks like you're paying off a loan. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah here and then there. <laughs> oh, so with the loan balancing program, does that work? Like, if you already have a credit score, do you improve it? Yeah, it does. Because generally, when you're really young, you don't have very much credit history at all. So anytime you can add credit history, that's going to be automatic, as this product is for only thirty dollars. It's going to help you. Uh, but there's other ways too, like as we've mentioned, like not just this, but also being on parents' credit cards, etc. Um, yeah. well, did you have a question? Oh yeah. Um, but I've heard that credit kind of things are better alternatives than like for profit banks. Um, can you explain a little bit about um, what's the difference between, I don't know if you guys already said that, though. Yeah, um, so um, <laughs> we did talk about it, um, but sort of all credit unions, not just Blasku, um, the number one thing is that we're nonprofit and we're generally all focused on a certain community. Um, so at Wasco, we focus at Georgetown. Um, I know of another credit union that is, you know, banking services for florists, um, all these other things. Um, so like, there's really like there's Navy Federal. That's a huge one you've probably heard of. Um, but the reason why we are able to do better things is because we're nonprofit. And so how that tangibly affects you, right? Lower fees. Um, lower interest rates on your loans, um, better interest rates on your savings accounts, um, better customer service. A lot of that is because you are just, you know, like it's more of like a mom and pop store versus going to like a stop and shop or like a, a Safeway sort of thing. Yeah. So is it kind of like a cooperative, like everybody that's in it is a business owner? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, or, um, yeah. yeah. So at Wasco, yeah. you put in $10 when you start. And those ten dollars go into your savings account, and they represent your share in the credit union. So every time um, we do well, you get proceeds to your share. Um, and then when you close your account, you get to take your share back. So you get your ten dollars back um, when you do close your account if you choose to do so. Um, most credit unions operate the same way, um, varying amounts of amount you have to deposit at first. Yeah, so I know you said you could build credit by getting um, credit card as a parent. So I know I tried to do a Bank of America and Wells Fargo, and they told me there was no point simply because that credit card is under my credit. Like, my name is hard so I can use it, but it's under them, so it wouldn't really build any credit. So yeah, so what you want to do is you would apply, and your parents would co-sign that card. Thank you. 
Yeah, does that answer your question? Or? Yeah, I just don't know why those reps, I mean, they're big companies, why you would tell me that. I can't build credit through my parents that. That's because the, your parents would just be adding a car to their bill, basically, versus you having your own bill that's co-signed by your parents. I, I think you're still not sure. Yes, yeah, so I, I, mean, I try to do it that way too, but I still can't get a car that way either. Which car? Because you're not you're not getting approved. Or? Yes, I didn't get approved, even though my parents. So I think there are some cards that are a lot more student friendly than others. Um, I know I got not I didn't get approved the first time I applied, but then I applied through like a Capital One Student Advantage card. Like there's a lot of like student oriented ones. Um, the things with these is like they're going to be like I don't think there's an annual fee on mine. I have really good terms and when I can pay it. There's a really like this might not sound really important, but it is a really great user friendly app, so I can just like pay on my phone and stuff like that. I'm um, very oriented towards students. Um, yes, it only gives one percent cash back, which in the grand scheme of credit cards isn't that much. Um, but the point is, is that they are more student friendly and more willing to forego like credit history um, and stuff like that to get you approved. Um, to that question, I actually, so I didn't realize that this was going to happen. My parents have me as an authorized user on one or two of their credit cards, and it shows up when I look on credit card on my credit report. So I think, like, and I read that, like, it has to be an authorized user on a card to in order to go to credit, like, if it's for your parents' card. Yeah, it depends on the type of card and the system and the way it's sort of set up. Um, for me, I know that like my credit card companies or my parents' credit card companies have said that like when I am on it, um, it does affect them, me in some way, my credit score. But I think it really just depends on the bank and the institution and how it, you're on the card. Um, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to add something else. Um, going back to uh, automatic payments and like little mistakes you can make. A lot of the times you could either correct me right on this. The first time you make an automatic payment, like you say you roll for it, you have to make the first one manually. So I would check with your bank or check with your bill pay to make sure it doesn't say like auto pay starts next month and then you forget to pay the first one because you thought you're good. So always check on that to make sure. And just also know that, you know, with technology we have all these like great things like auto pay and like etc. Um, but as Ben said before, like it's really easy to forget about things. Um, when we have all this great technology where you don't have to balance a checkbook every day and like all these other things. So be very much on top of every card you open, every loan you have, um, all of that because if you forget about your $6 charge on your Macy's card, in the end, three years later, that could really hurt your credit score. Go ahead. Is there like an online like, budgeting thing, kind of like a, check, like a checkbook, but that's online, that's more like like our, like our generation for me. Um, I'm sure there is. Like, people really like Mint. Um, I know that's the one a lot of people use. Um, free? Yeah, most of these are all free. Um, and you have to put in your bank account info and credit card. So uh, Kevin, who's with Common Sense, uses personal capital. You want to talk about that? Yeah, so I uh, there's a lot of apps, but I use personal capital because it, it really helps you keep track of different types of accounts. So with Mint, they are really focused on like checking and Savings accounts, they do have a little bit of uh, like input for you to put a, like, if your bank has an online access for your credit card, you can link it to that. But I use personal capital because it allows me to like, keep track of different accounts. So you, uh, whenever you use a tool, just make sure that it allows you to use the account that you want to use it for, because some of them are, have like limited functionality. And uh, another thing that you should probably just look for, there's probably no reason why you should pay to use one of these services. Yeah. So if someone's asked you to like pay for it, you should just like move on and find something yeah, else. Definitely. Yeah, we kind of budget like budget add-ons in there. <laughs> yeah, and also for mint.com it kind of like shames you for doing too much of one thing. So I have to find out my credit card, so it's like it's a lot of restaurants you've been to. You just kind of like comment on that or you can like look at the balances of what you spend on groceries versus restaurants or whatever. So that's kind of good if you're really trying to check yourself. Um, any other questions? And if you want to take down our email, oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, this is like, again, a basic question. But um, for credit cards, like you have, or at least for mine, I have like a month to pay off anything. So let's say I take out like a certain amount at the beginning of a month. Am I technically like carrying debt 
even though the no, date one, to pay one, it off. No, one period has to pass before okay. you can get charged out. And so like then if you pass that date, then you're carrying that balance. balance. And that's going to incur and interest. interest. Okay. You get sort of like that 30-day grace period almost. Right. Okay. Depending. Any other questions? And if you want to take down our emails, you can yeah. as well. Um, the common sense one as well is GUCS at georgetown.edu. Um, and you can, these are our emails, you can always stop by um, and ask questions. Ask for Ben Chan. <laughs> um, so the, for those of you guys who came in late, um, some of the director promises, and we have a bunch of pamphlets and stuff up here um, that you want to grab. So we're going to get next, next, next.